Now most of the time, SQL Monitor is just going to work. It's going to look like this. You're going to see all of your servers. You're going to get your alerts. You're going to be able to dig in and look and see what's going on. And that's great. But sometimes things do go wrong. And when things go wrong, one of the best ways to, to understand is to take a look at a log file. Now SQL Monitor has a different log file than a lot of the other Redgate tools. And that's because there are multiple machines dealing with all the various aspects of the logs. So in order to get the logs, you don't navigate through to a location on the drive, although you could do so. But instead, to ensure that you get all the logs from all the various machines involved, we're instead going to go to the configuration screen. And on the configuration screen, down near the bottom, you will see a section called diagnostics. Now the diagnostics is going to go and retrieve all of your log files and it's going to make them into a zip file that you could then send to um, support in order to deal with any kind of issue that you were running into. Now we can even take a look at it. I've already clicked on it and it's already made the zip file. So we can take a look at it, open up the file, and it sees um, any machines that we have connected and our website so we can see what's going on. And you have an about screen that gives more details. So we'll open this up in Visual Studio Code, of course. And there you see the information about that it's collecting. And this is just the basic details that it's collecting on my machine on, on the local drive here. But you can also see that we've got the information about the website, the website configuration files, and all of the rest, and also the local host, the base monitor, and the information that it has as well. And so if we could open up one of these, take a look at what the base monitor is doing, and you see information from the base monitor, any kind of issues it's run into, if it's run into issues, um, and all the various stuff. And you can see that there were a couple of errors, and that's because this is a VM and it turns on and off. So there, you know, it, it sometimes it's not there when it first starts up, and that's you know just a normal behavior within this bit of code. But that's how we can get to all of the information we need from SQL Monitor if we had a problem. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward, and I would strongly recommend you follow that approach with the retrieve log files and not try to navigate to them on your own because this ensures that if support needs to help you they get every possible thing they need in order to help and if you've got lots of file lots and lots of servers under monitoring or you've got a very complex monitor situation um, with multiple masters and all the rest of that stuff that you set up the retrieve log file is going to do a good job at tracking everything down for you so that's how you should take care of it that's all I have to share with you today. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.